uh, just like most of you guys, after my high school, I was just confused with life and wandering around and trying to figure out uh, what to do. And then immediately uh, I realized that, okay, there is football that I could actually use to escape because the circumstances around me at the time were not so great. My family, uh, my dad had lost his job and uh, uh, I, the, the, again, the, everything back home was just uh, not in the best position. And uh, I quickly realized that, okay, this, I needed a passport. I didn't have one. I needed connections. I didn't know the rules regarding minors. And on top of that, I also needed uh, information regarding the visas. So, and like most of you guys, you all don't know all of these things that some of you would text agents and people and asking and you don't have a passport or you do not have, a, you do not know if you're a minor, you do not know what type of visa you need. All I thought was like, okay, somebody would send me a visa and then I'll just go down there and that was in the reality. So very quickly, I started to figure out how to get a passport. So I went back home, uh, saw my family, and uh, anyway, I ended up signing for a team there back in South Sudan. Uh, a few weeks down the road before the league started, we were training, the war breaks out of the country, almost got shot, and I had to flee the country. I went back to Uganda. And back in Uganda, I was just playing area football with my friends. And uh, the, the, the gap between the guys I was playing with it's so big though this so so very good guys and not so very good guys and uh every time i was i would always tell them because i already knew at the back of my mind i want to play professional football because i wasn't going to go to university everything was not so great i actually had a scholarship but the scholarship was half and it was cut short and uh in in iuea and i had to like just drop it and you know try to focus on football so every time i was playing with these guys i would tell them you know what uh, I'm gonna play professional football and they're like look around man You're not even the best player among us. How are you gonna make it to Europe? And I'm like man I don't care. It's because you guys don't want to go to Europe That's why or because you guys don't want to play professional football. My mentality was so strong and uh, It would just 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 it was just annoying to tell them and again the more they tell me that it would bruise my ego and it would like also piss me off so these guys who were older than me, they were not so helpful with the situation. Again, not all of them, some of them were like, hey man, you can do it. But some of them were just like, no, it's not, it's not going to happen. Uh, but again, these are the same guys that now text me and they're like, yeah man, keep going, you're making us proud and da 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 da. And I'm like, okay. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> so most of them would tell me, you can do it, you can, but I was like, yeah let's see let's see let's see who's gonna have the last the last love anyway uh so i immediately realized that playing with friends was not gonna take me anywhere so i tried to join the team in uganda and uh it was very hard for uh, south Sudanese to join teams in uganda because again most of us guys you play with your friends and then you go to a club level which is like everybody at the club level is good or easy or is as good as you are or even better than you and any small mistake you do they will shout at you and most of them did not like that idea of someone like telling them that you've done a mistake it was bruising their ego because you come from somewhere and you are a star and you go somewhere and now everybody just wants to undermine you so they don't like that and uh yeah so they did not do that so anyway i went a different route joined the, uh, one of the regional league teams because my, my coach that had me when i was in the academy uh he ended up registering the same team that i was on at uh, regional level so I was playing there and uh, this is a, one of the best coaches I've ever had in my life. His name is called Charles Ojo. Uh, he really like, liked me and he saw a lot of potential in me. So he tried to push me, but I was again just being childish and everything. I was joking too much. I wasn't being that too serious most of the times in the training and he would punish me one time. I remember one time uh, he was training with us and I kind of like did a style on him, net met him. And I started laughing, which was now looking back, I'm like, I shouldn't have done it. First of all, he's, he's, he's a little bit old and uh, he's not trying to compete with me. He's just trying to push me. So he joins the training and I do that to him. I shouldn't be laughing. But anyway, uh, he punished me and everything he did was all out of love for me. Uh, immediately, yeah, the season finished and uh, <clears throat> I was trying to like, think now, what was the next step? So I was like, you know what? 
let's go back home and see something because I again had some family problems back home I needed to uh, uh, handle so I went back home and back home I ended up resigning with Al Rabita FC uh, play there I joined the team in the middle of the second round I joined the beginning of the second round so I joined I played and the season finished uh, and immediately I was like you know what I want to play professional football let's get to Europe so started working on everything started like looking online I ended up getting a scam I came back to Uganda but we ended up getting a scam anyway and I was scammed by an agent who was saying he was bringing me and two of my friends to Croatia for, to join NK OCJ and this was nowhere close to being true like now looking back the messages he sent and how everything how the scam worked it was just the expression that made him scam us uh, because he was like, yeah, send us, send me this X amount of money so I can send you the visa. And when we send the money, we didn't send money to Europe. We sent money to West Africa. And I'm like, now I'm looking back, I'm like, so somebody in West Africa is getting me a visa to go to Europe. How is that making sense? But anyway, the way he played it. And secondly, he was an American. He was acting as an American. Not even, uh, he wasn't even like, a, uh, let's say, uh, uh, an European citizen. Anyway, we got scammed. That was that. And uh, me and Tob, the other two guys, Shalom and Angui, like, these were the guys that really wanted to play professional football. Angui, not so much. Maybe I was the one that was dragging him. Shalom, yes, he was driven. Uh, anyway, uh, we lost that money. And how we raised that money is still a miracle up to date because I wasn't working, I was confused with life when I was broke, but someone, I wanted to get that money. I did all I could, got the money. Uh, Angui, he also raised his money in his own ways. Shalom did the same thing in his own ways. And uh, we quickly uh, just accepted that it was a scam and we moved on. So after that, uh, I was like, you know what? Let's now try to hit Europe. I started making connections. But most of them were asking for videos. So my girlfriend at the time, uh, I would go like organize matches, organize people, go rent a field, and then try to play. And we were using her phone. She wasn't recording so good. So I told her, you know what? Let's stop using your phone. Now we need to just use um, less higher camera. So I started to scramble around with the money and a uh, higher camera guy. The camera guy would record a few matches and that's what I would put together not so very good not so decent like and I would send them out anyway the agent in Spain uh, immediately got onto the video kind of just like that I was being persistent and he said okay I'm going to send you an invitation to come to Spain and now this brings me back to most of you guys if you guys don't have a video I mean it's not necessarily that you need to be in a club environment to have video highlights you can actually just hire somebody a good a highlight video just make sure that it's unorganized people like everybody's wearing the same uniform and uh, the field is reasonable there's a referee and everything you know uh, that way you have something to show somebody of course not everybody has to be good in the videos all of your moments that are going to be cut out and if you're doing great there somebody might like that and that's what they're going to use to uh, give you a chance so try to make sure that you hire cameras good cameras or if you know a photographer a friend who's a good photographer then give him your phone let him uh, record you so the agent in Spain quickly uh, got onto it and he's like yeah I'm gonna give you a chance to come down here to Spain I was now in cloud nine this was a, gen a legit a genuine le uh, agent that wasn't asked for anything all he just wanted was like I'm gonna send you invitation Asked my passport, my passport was almost expiring. So I was like, you can't travel with this kind of passport. You need to get a different one. And I was this one, I was in Kenya. So I had to fly back home, go change the passport, get a new one, because my the other one was almost expiring. And you know, to travel, you need to have validity of at least six months in your passport. Mine was less than six months. I think it was about four months or three months of validity. So change the passport, came back and... Uh, he sent me the invitation later. Now the real task was getting the money to for the visa application, getting the money for the flight ticket because the, no, no one was covering that. All that weight was on me, but at least I had a trial. 
tried actually the first one was like uh the first one to spain was like actually was going to join a combine but uh the com the combine that i was attending yes now i remember the combine that i was applying for uh i could i got night visa to spain and then the second one now is where the agent uh did what he did anyway um and the funny thing with the guys on the combine they didn't even notice that my passport was almost expiring so they didn't even tell me but agent was like concerned so this uh, combined guys were just like after the money was paid anyway uh, the money that I paid I couldn't get it back from the combine guys and uh, yeah I went back home quickly tried to find raise money among my friends nobody was coming through a few that did yeah they did uh, got the visa got the passport and now I was trying to get the money to go back to Kenya and apply for the visa there was no money nothing nothing this is around christmas time only a passport and the agent was is like on my neck he's like sonny i need you here real quick because they everything you have to be here before january before the end of january or something and i had nothing so my girlfriend at the time she was working in uh, where she was working she knew a girl that was trying to do real estate and she was trying to buy land she was buying lands to build houses and everything so my girlfriend uh, told me, hey, she told her friend, no, look, my boyfriend has a piece of land he wants to sell because he needs money for this and that. And her friend was like, yeah, sure, I can buy the land from him if he's, he's urgently in need of money like that. Call me, he's like, hey, uh, can you come over? I want to talk to you. I'm like, you want to see me? She's like, no, it's something else. I'm like, okay, met her, told me, yeah, I got someone to buy the land. I didn't believe it. She's like, yeah, uh, tomorrow morning, she's going to come to see the land and then give you the money. I'm like, okay, back in the game. Anyway, uh, they came by, the friend came over, bought the land, and I had the money, cash. I think the money was like 800 or 700 something. I don't remember very well. Um, immediately that very morning, I booked the ticket, go to Nairobi, and applied for a visa. Going there, the visa, pay for the visa, pay for insurance, and I waited for almost three weeks. The visa got denied. I was like, okay. Now I was left with almost half of the money of the land. I was like, you know what? I am now, like, I've been denied visa twice to Spain. Trying to reappeal, but the appeal process was not ideal and it wasn't gonna make sense at all. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna leave this like this let's try to uh, leave the appeal try to go somewhere I started looking around for other places anyway the agent told me you know what you cannot come right now unless in the summer I'm like okay so uh, went back and forth with a different person uh, an agent in Thailand Pichet and Pichet was like uh, there's an opportunity but it's late right now you have like two weeks to the end of transfer window please do not come to thailand sunny being sunny i stubbornly went and applied for a visa to thailand i got the visa and i took a picture I'm like yo i got the visa and i'm almost coming picture looked at me like i told you man the time is not there but anyway if you've got the visa well and good you can uh, get down here <sighs> go to the go to the ticket person to raise the money for the ticket, the money was not enough. The ticket was like 1,500 or was like 1,200. I had about 500. So I had to run around now and gather everything and try to raise that money for the ticket and all that. Uh, anyway, eventually managed to raise that money and I touched down to Thailand. That was my first time outside Africa. And that's what I wanted. And it just felt like all my dreams had come true. Uh, <clears throat> this story is going to stop here, but I'm just going to talk something small. So, uh, looking at it, you, what you can learn from this is like, uh, if you really want something, whatever people are saying or the circumstances around you, they shouldn't define you. You got to define yourself because it's, it's, it's only what you, what you feel when you go to bed and you cannot sleep that fire that's burns inside you 
So the other people, they will say whatever they want, but they don't know what you feel, man. If you take their advice, are, you, are they going to feel the same thing that you're feeling when you're alone at night, you know? So try to be innovative, try to find solutions. Either way, when the, just whatever you do, make sure that you fi try to find a solution to your problem. Trust me, there are things that I did that now I look back and I'm like, should have never done any of that. But still, I did I did what I did anyway because I had to uh, realize my dream. Basically, I had to like get to where I wanted to be. So I've done a lot of things that one day I would say them. I would say them. some some of them, not all of them. And uh, now, guys, uh, this this whole episode stops here. If you want guys hear the part two of uh, the time in Thailand, just comment down below and we'll do that again. So it's been your boy Sunny. Till then. Thank you.